Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Good morning everybody so today we are starting the second class so in the first class we talked about how energy has intertwined in our day to day life affairs we talked about some of the basic requirements where energy plays a critical role we talked about the case study of ammonia production and and then we concluded the class with uh, the fact that india is a oil dependent economy where it is uh, continuously importing oil in order to run most of its uh, industrial functioning and all other automobile industry transportation industry and different kind of production unit so today what we will talk about in the lecture 2 is uh, what really is this oil economy and what is the genesis when people realize that uh, we really have to think beyond the oil so <clears throat> if we look back if we really read through the history of energy dynamics we'll realize fairly early in uh, around 1950s 1940s and 1950s it was realized in united states that uh, oil or any other fossil fuel as a matter of fact will not be there forever a time will come when they will be sufficiently depleted from the floor of earth and we really need to think well in advance how we will, we will get around the oil deficit situation what will be the technologies which will circumvent that situation so a mitigation effort has to be initiated at least 30 40 50 years ahead of time before the crisis really emerges out so just have a look in this lecture first of all we will talk about that how these reports were coming and there are several contradictory reports over a period of time and today we will kind of summarize in the first part of the of this lecture that what were those initial reports which are kind of landmark report today and uh, where we really stand and where in a specific india stands retrospective based on those us reports and the current report of indian energy sector okay so let's start the lecture 2 which is our lecture 2 which is the first part we will talk about the oil economy of the world so as i was telling you that there are several reports which were coming and the very first report which came was called hubert peak theory what is the hubert peak theory okay hubert peak theory so there was a scientist a gentleman called hubert who proposed in 1956 who first proposed in the, the year 1956 that uh, it was basically a paper he presented in the meeting of the american petroleum institute when he was american petroleum institute where he stated that uh, oil production in the united states will peak between 1965 and 1970 so this was what oil production peak 
So, this was the very, very first report and kind of a historical report which was given by Hubert stating that possibly this is where mankind will see that there will be shrinkage in the oil fields unless otherwise new oil resources are found across the globe whether under the sea that is why you see there are a lot of uh, undersea drilling taking place all over the world or any other places in the world where there is sufficient oil and which is easily pulled out from the base of earth and which could be easily transported. Okay. So, this was the very, very first early historical report. But interestingly, though Hubert predicted that it will be around 1965 and 1970, that really did not happen. Oil production did not peak. But that does not mean that Hubert was wrong. Followed by this, there were several back and forth reports which came. But in between 2005 and 2007, the United States Department of Agriculture came out with another report which is also called the Hirsch report and we will narrate it in the next slide where we will talk about. So, this is between 2000, so it is kind of little a like it is between 2005 and 2007 and the source is US Department of Energy. And this is also called Harsh Report, which was published during this time. H I R S C H Harsh Report. Okay. So the Harsh Report highlights on these following points. So point one, it says these are the key points. The first key point is world oil peaking is going to happen. So, this is true, some day or other is going to happen, it is just a matter of when it is going to happen. The second critical point, so this is important. So, this phenomena of oil peaking which is the maximum production could cost economies dearly, it, is, it will have a direct impact on the economy of any country. So, because we are oil dependent economy. Next, the third point which Harsh report highlighted is, it is an unique challenge. This situation poses an unique challenge to mankind. A challenge in modern times since industrial revolution man has not faced. The fourth interesting point in this is that it is a real problem is the liquid fuel for transportation. So, where it is going to hit the most is the transportation sector because this is one sector which is the lifeline will be for all our economic development and that you can always see that if you walk through or move through the highways you will always see that it is the trucks which are carrying all the goods from one place to another. Then what they say in order to mitigate this problem, mitigation efforts will run for decades before we re-establish a oil independent economy or I would say a economy where you are not fully relying on oil, oil may be a very small fragment, there will be other sources which will be used to derive the energy for it. 
So, this report further continues as we will come to the next slide. So, one second let me check. Okay. So, the sixth point of the report was both supply and demand will require attention. So, we really have to see that what is the real supply and demand because as of now because of the oil economy we are not really clear what is the real supply and demand. But with the change of the landscape we really have to be careful and recalibrate. So, there will be a lot of recalibration which will be needed and this recalibration has to come at multiple level at the level of the nation at the level of small townships at the level of household level where all we are starting or utilizing this different kind of uh, supplies where we needed the supply and what are the demands for such supply. Okay. So, coming back to the next point into it what we will be talking about is so once the both supply and demands require attention. So, the next one is uh, it is a matter of risk management. So, this is a classic situation where we really have to think that this is a huge risk and we have to develop strategies for managing these risks which is on our way. Next important part for such kind of things you need very importantly uh, government intervention. Without government intervention, the whole area of mitigating the oil crisis cannot be tackled. This is a very Herculean task. The next point, what Hirsch report very clearly says is that economic upheaval is not inevitable. And the last point we need most importantly more informations about our current energy demands and use. or supply. So, overall Hirsch report or the DOA report between 2005 and 2007 highlighted it very clearly that it is high time that mitigation efforts have to be initiated. Because if you think of it, so say for example, currently we are in 2017 we are totally dependent on oil economy and I say see next within next 15 years of the total amount of oil what we are getting in India will go down to half. Just try to imagine the situation if such a situation occurs it is going to affect our economy big time because the trucks, the trains which are the lifeline of this nation which are carrying goods from one corner of the nation to the other corner of the nation feeding our soldiers feeding our civilians all over the nation will go down to half and that is something which we cannot afford it may lead to a catastrophe. So, if we do not wish that catastrophe to hit us then we possibly probably have to think much earlier and this could even lead to something called a Malthasian catastrophe. If we really do not want it, so if we look at it if we kind of plot it the next slide I will just do a plotting for you guys just to give you an idea. So, say for example 
today is say for example I am sitting in 2017 okay now this is where I have the reports with me the reports came in 2000 say 2005 even 10 years before 2007 okay this is where the US DOE report clearly tells that you know the mitigation efforts have to be started so and I know say for example 2030 or say 2040 where we are seeing the whole oil thing oil peak is going to happen just for the so then it is high time that I start investing on ways and means today on other energy sources and if I if I do not do that now, if the government does not invest money on other energy sources today, then what we are looking at is at this stage if we reach, then we are looking for a catastrophe and this does not need further re reiteration that if we fail to run our transportation business in any place in the world, if we cannot fly our planes, if we cannot run our trucks, we are in serious problem. So, now in the light of this, when I talked about the other energy sources in my slide out here, where India stands. So, now this was the very beginning brief giving you the outline of the oil economy of the world and India is it is just like a spider net. So, say for example, if you imagine a spider net out here say for example, oil producers, oil consumers, if there is a shaking in the oil producing nations, there will be a shake in the economy of the oil consuming nation. So, it is a worldwide web. So, you cannot run away from it, we have to accept the fact it is time we get our self-educated about other sources of energy and one of the thing, the one of the very social purpose of this course is to educate our youth about what are the possibilities India has, where India can make a complete, a big change, a big difference, which could, we could be, you know, one of the leaders in this area, where so, let us evaluate where India stands. So, you remember in the last class we talked about India today is an oil dependent economy. It is importing oil from Venezuela, it is importing oil from Saudi Arabia, it is importing oil for Iraq, Iran, whatever. It is importing natural gas and so on so forth. But let us see what India has. So, let us again redraw the graph and reposition ourselves and then from there we will slowly start moving towards the core of it, the by energy. Okay. So, let us move on to the next slide. So, in the next slide what we talk about. So, you remember in the last uh, class I told you so assume that this is this box represent India and at this point what India is doing it is importing oil and in that process we are spending a lot of our foreign exchange. We talked about that. Okay. And so basically, we are currently we can call ourselves this is present, okay. So, this is in the present time, this is 2017, we are talking about fossil fuel dependent economy or fossil fuel based economy. Of course, India is producing, apart from it, it is also producing significant amount of coal, natural gas and all other things. Okay. So, this is where we are today. So, evaluate the situation now where we wanted to go. Now, if this is where we are standing today, so where do we want? The first thing what we wanted to do this foreign exchange spending 
if we wanted to reduce this that is our goal because if we reduce this then we should be able to invest this or funnel this money for doing more and more research into the area of renewable energy. Now let's see what India can offer and what India has as a matter of fact which could be very helpful. Now these are the resources India is having. We are the rich diversity of biomass which is the direct source of the crux of this course called bioenergy one area. We are diversity rich then we have plenty of sunlight the country has no dearth of sunlight. So, we are a very healthy photovoltaic nation we have solar cells PV here stands for photovoltaics. We have a huge sea line which gives us the tidal energy we have waves if you see the Bay of Bengal on one side Indian Ocean in the bottom and Arabian Sea you could harness them harness energy from this moments then we have plenty of wind which could be running the windmills those of you who have visited the Gujarat coastline all the way along the Somnath all the way to up if you go to Dwarka you will see a lot of windmills located in that region. So, this is for the electricity then we have the crisscross network of rivers which is the hydropower and we have the geothermal sources. So, if we could integrate all this if we have a national program today which ensures that all these different resources what India is having starting from biomass to tidal to solar to wind to geothermal then we can and if all if we put all our resources all our research all our investment and all our a huge chunk of our youth dedicate their life in terms of the research and uh, getting a feel of the technology in these areas like the biomass, the sunlight, tidal, wave, winds then we definitely can reduce this foreign exchange and slowly what will happen is our import percentage of oil in years to come is going to go down and automatically if the import goes down automatically our foreign exchange expenditure is also going to go down in a spending ad and that foreign exchange which is not being used could be funneled for more and more research into this area more and more research and teaching into this whole domain of renewable energies. So, this is where if this is what we talked about non-renewable energy India today where we are heading is or where it should head is world of renewable energy and uh, in this sector there is a lot there is a huge room for different form of innovations which is waiting so this is where research and 
innovation is needed. Now, out of this whole thing, our concern for this course is the easiest of all of them, which is very abundant in the nation, is the first point, what I mentioned in the slide, if you go back to the slide, is this part. This is what we will be dealing with. And partly, we will talk about some of these part where the plant dies and all these things will come very handy to us. Okay. And so, this is where we will be concentrating. But before we get into this, let us move on to the next slide where we will be talking about what are the overall use of energy, if you look at it. So, the overall use of uh, energy is in four different areas. One is the commercial, which we talk about all sorts of, you know, aviation, transportation and all those kind of things. The second is the industrial. This is all the product manufacturing industries. Then we have the residential requirements. And then fourthly, we have exclusively on different kind of transportation. Okay. So, in every country, 20 to 30 percent, each of these vary from country to country, depending on which country you are, depending on the per capita energy consumption. As I mentioned in the previous class, energy consumption. So, So, the overall energy use of any nation is dictated by these four slots, that is the commercial use or transportation or industrial use or residential use, how much you are using. So, if we have to create a newer set of grids of renewable energy, then another interesting thing what possibly we needed to develop is we have to utilize the existing grids what we are having for the current sources of energy and we have to integrate these renewable energy sources on those existing grids to transport energy from one place to another or transport power from one place to another. Okay. So, today let us summarize what we have talked about. So, today we talked about first of all we talked about historically the oil landscape of the world, how from 19, since 1950s till, till this day, how the different predictions have shaped the way the governments of different nations have acted towards mitigating what is called as the oil peaking. So, there will be a time when there will be maximum and after that the oil production is going to fall down since that time. And then we talked about where India stands and what are the different energy forms which are very easily available to us and which could be utilized for or which could be channelized using technologies to mitigate the problem of the declining oil production across the world. So, and lastly we talked about the four different areas the namely the commercial, industrial and the residential and transportation where energy is being consumed to the maximum level. So, with this today we will conclude the second lecture. In the third lecture, we will move on to describe the different uh, units which are used for measuring energy and then we will talk about the domain of bioenergy per se. With these two first two lectures where you get an overall idea about 
how energy in your first lecture we talked about how energy rules our life and in the second lecture we talked about how the oil economy is influencing and then the how the oil economy is slowly shifting to reach its maturity and after that there will be further decline only it will be aging industry then and how from that point onward different sources of energy where bioenergy will play a very 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 critical role will take over from there and where India can make a whole range of difference because if you look at it again reiterating this fact that if we look at India's situation all these things whether we talk about the biomass which is abundant, sunlight, tidal again abundant, wave it is abundant, wind it is abundant, hydropower it is abundant, geothermal it is abundant, all these added together we could make a enormous difference in the energy landscape of the world. So okay with this I will close in the second lecture, in the third lecture we will move on to the units of expressing energy and we will talk, we will move into the real domain of bioenergy. Thank you.